Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is the multi box trace by channel node? Let's go ahead and run this quick little example here. We'll hit play. The multi box trace by channel node is this node right here. And as you can see, we're hitting this cube. It's stopping and then it's going to continue on and it will continue on without hitting anything else. So by default, you're not really going to see much of a difference. When we pull up the node itself, though, we are going to find one small difference. The multi versions don't fire out multiple traces. It returns multiple results because it doesn't stop if it just simply gets an overlap. It's only going to stop if it hits a collision. So what do we mean by that? We're going to cover the differences between the regular and the multi-version. If you need more information on some of the individual aspects, such as the sizes, orientation, and the other values, check out the original video for the box trace by channel. So our multi-box trace right now, I have it set to trace through the visibility channel. And when we run this, it's going to hit this item because it's the first visible thing it can on the trace and it's going to stop. Now let me go and increase my box size a little bit. And let me also move my player over one more. So we can start off easier and we'll hit play. And you notice now it's going to go ahead and it's hitting this sphere right here. It's hitting the bottom corner of the sphere. And technically, if I was to walk in front of this, it's going to hit the nose of my character and it's going to stop right there because that is the first visible thing it can see. I've set up this character to not reply to the visible channel on the actual pawn cube itself, just the nose. So, even though we have my player in the way, it's still not returning back more than one result. If we were to go over here and hit print, you now right now we're telling it to print out any of the the length of our hits. When we hit play, it's one, still one, but we know the cube blocks, we know the sphere blocks, and we know my nose blocks. But why is this multi only returning one? Multi hits by channel only return back if it's an overlap. Once it hits something in terms of a block, it will return back a block and it will stop at that point. So if I take my trace channel and turn this to my custom channel and I hit play, now we're going to return back five. It's hitting the sphere, the other sphere, the cube itself, the wall behind that, and then the wall behind that. And if I walk in front of it, you'll notice it now goes to eight because it's hitting my collision cube, it's hitting the box itself that I'm on, and it's hitting my nose because those are all set to overlap for my custom channel. Now by custom channel, I mean if you go into your project settings, collision, you have the ability to set custom trace channels. If we went into something like let's say my wall, which is set to block all, you'll find under your trace type it's going to block visibility which is why when it hit it, it went ahead and didn't do anything else. It'll block the camera trace channel, but it'll overlap my custom channel. So keep that in mind. If you're going to use a multi trace by channel, if the channel type is going to be a collision, like here's, here's an example. Let's turn, do, 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 do. Let's turn this box here. Let's take our box, our cube, and let's turn this into custom, and let's tell it to block my custom channel. Oh, son of a gun. Let's open it up. Let's take my cube, custom, and block the, the channel. And let's run this again. You'll notice we only get three as a result this time. Why are we getting three? Well, the first thing our cube hits, well, technically, the first thing our cube encounters is the sphere on the top left. It's set to overlap, so it adds it to the array, and it counts it as one of our values. Then it hits the sphere on the right, 
it counts as an overlap and it continues. And it's sweeping from here all the way to the end point down here. There's our end point. So keep that in mind, it's a start and end. Now once it gets to the cube itself, the cube is set to block our custom channel. So it's gonna treat that as the end point for our trace and it's going to stop. If I was to walk in front of this, you'll notice it changed to six because the three parts of me, again, the nose, the blocking part and the collision capsule are set to just overlap. And you can see our values change. So inside of our multi trace by channel node, our return results, it's going to return back anything up until you get a hit. So that is something important to keep in mind. The return value here also, this only returns true if it's a blocking hit. So in this case, if I take my cube and return it back to, uh, I was dynamic, right? I want to say block all dynamic. Yeah, there we go. So block all dynamic. And we run this again. You'll notice we're now back to five. But if I was to hook this node up to an if statement and plug this in here, and now it'll only print if this return value is true. Well, nothing's going to happen. An overlap is not the same as a block, and that is something to keep in mind. This return value here, most of the time, if you're trying to be efficient, you're going to hook this up to an if statement and only have it do everything else if it hits something. Keep in mind, an overlap is not a hit. If you're going to use this like that to see what you overlap, you need to make sure you're not using something like this, or maybe you design around it. For example, Let's say you have a building. The building has windows and it has walls. Or maybe you have other stuff in the way and you are testing out um, penetration, bullet penetration. You want to make sure you get all of your overlaps as it flies through your walls and your glass and things like that. But maybe you have it set up where your player blocks these things so that way you ignore it when it fires through things and doesn't hit anything you care about but once it hits something you care about like the player then you want to take action on it and then you actually want to do calculations maybe on each material it went through as it penetrated each of the collisions so that's a use for our tracing by channel the the multi tracing my channel and the box the reason for the box is if you want a bigger hit radius maybe you're firing something bigger than a single bullet maybe you want to set a bunch of individual maybe you just want to use a box for performance purposes for a shotgun now keep in mind when you're using a box trace if you want it to actually be a box around the origination point you don't just plug your start and end point in that's going to go ahead and let's make this a little bigger. Let's make it 50, 50. It's not going to trigger because again, it still has to sweep. It has to start and end somewhere. If you just add a small value to your ending point, it's going to sweep a little bit and then we can get a bit of a trigger. Of course, it's not colliding with me because I'm not set to block. And we're just set to our custom channel here. Let's go to visibility. There we go, and our nose will now count as triggering it. That's all covered in the original single trace version of the box. This is going to wrap up our multi-box by trace channel video.